What's going on everybody? Mr. J Gilbert here and Total War Warhammer 3 Creative Assembly did it again. They dropped gameplay footage for Shadows of Change. This time, Mother Ostanky Leg. That's not it. Mother Ostankia for Kiz Love. And yeah, that is, this this right here is gonna justify the $25 price tag for Shadows of Change. Right? Let's check out the gameplay showcase. And then as always, at the end, uh, we'll kind of go through it again. And I'll give you my reactions to it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check that out. To the young of Kislev, Mother Ostankia is a fairy tale, a cryptid of the forests who will come out and chastise naughty children for disobeying their parents. To those who stand against Kislev, both within and without, she's a much more real horror. The Witch of Kislev's forests is powered by the lands themselves, lands she will fight tooth and claw to protect. And to those who play Total War Warhammer 3, She's a powerful wizard on a fast sled with terrifying artillery from a magic cauldron. Starting in the Dolganyir forests on the Road of Skulls in the Realm of Chaos campaign, and on the bleak coast in Immortal Empires, Mother Stankia's goal is simple, to trample her foes into the dirt they seek to corrupt. Mother Ostankia's victory condition in both Realms of Chaos and Immortal Empires is different from the majority of her Kislevite counterparts. She has little concern for the devotion to the Ursonite faith, for she draws her power from something much older than the gods. Gaining strength from the earth and the spirits within it, her power comes from ancient rituals and trinkets, and her ability to cast hexes. It's these hexes which are the most pivotal, in collecting five of these through research and use of spirits, her objective becomes clear, to obtain the malediction of ruin. With this, she'll bring forth the destruction of Kislev's enemies and victory to your campaign. The first of these hexes she'll gain is the Purification Chant. She can use this to clear the corruption of chaos currently haunting Dolganya Forest, meaning you can focus more on pushing the enemy back and cleansing chaos's touch a tad more permanently. As she grows in power, as do the number of hexes you can utilize. Teleporting armies to magical forests, stealing income from enemy settlements, even spawning the horrors of the forest in settlements, the hexes she wields are powerful. Alongside these hexes are the incantations and curses Astankia can create within the Witch's Hut. The cauldron is for more than just artillery and scary spectral spider legs after all. Using trinkets gained either through alliance or conflict, incantations and curses can be crafted for use as one-off banners, to either aid your army with powerful summons, abilities or boons, or inflict pain on certain enemy units changing the tide of battle. Mother Ostankia may fall under Kislev's banners, but her armies are very different from her contemporaries. While she can gain the usual Kislevite roster of Kossars and Streltsy through an alliance with other Kislevite factions, her forces invoke the horrors of the forest, from giant spiders and bloodthirsty bats to the new forces Ostankia brings. 
Let's check out some of those unique units. The Hag Witches. The spirit's chosen guardians to protect the lands, possess power of the law of beasts, death, and shadows. Akshina Ambushers. The stealthy hunters of Kislev's forests emerge from the undergrowth, wielding crossbows with armor-piercing capabilities and a knowledge of the lands that allow them to stay hidden in any terrain. Also emerging from the mists, the things in the woods. Feral beasts that move through the trees as if they were nothing. Seek out those who would even dare to hide amongst the woods they call home. And the behemoth of Kislev's natural fury, the incarnate elemental of beasts, brings forth the terror of the motherland. No woodland can stop its passage. No mortal man can withstand its fearful visage. Large or small, nobody can stop this beast's fury. It's not just these who have answered the call of Kislev's lands, however. New regiments of renown have come to heed the call. The Wolfhearts, Voidenov's Brawlers, and the Mordheim Beowulves have come to Kislev's aid in the land's time of need. The forces of chaos may taint man, but it'll take a lot more for them to taint these lands. Mother Ostankia is ready to protect the lands of Kislev, but you'd do well not to call her a hag. She wouldn't like that. She might like it if you considered pre-ordering, or letting us know your thoughts in the comments below. Okay, so as I kind of turn this down just a little bit, uh, we're gonna kind of watch it again. Uh, I'll kind of give my reactions to it and what I think. And play it in the comments below. Let me know what you think of the gameplay showcase for Mother Stankia. And also just kind of all the other ones, Yambo and even the Changeling. And is the Shadows of Change DLC really even worth it, especially the price? Now, I know we're getting three Legendary Lords, which is what we got for uh, when the Chaos Dwarves came out. This is three factions with three Legendary Lords. Chaos Doors is one faction, three legendary lords. So I understand the correlation there. You know, it's being the same price, all that. But I always felt that with the Chaos Dwarves, you got a full race, tons of different units, a lot of new mechanics. And with Shadows of Change, we're just getting out a lot of recycled mechanics. So we'll go over this. And I do think the Mother of Stanky mechanic is just like uh, Grom de Ponch's mechanic. Um, Yan Bo is still just like a same variation of how Cathay works, right? And the Changeling could be as part of the Skaven type me mechanics. So I think the Shadows of Change, it, it's $20. We could have talked about that, right? Uh, $25, I think it's just too much. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about uh, Mother Stinky gameplay trailer. Uh, and we'll kind of just give my reactions for it. And we'll kind of go on about that. I always, I always love these trailers, though. First and foremost, I think they do a great job with kind of putting out these hype videos and kind of talking and showing them off. Uh, I hate how they're now adding in the, hey, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. They've never done that before, and I feel it's very forced right now. Only because they know that people hate this, so they're trying to get money. Those incarnates are going to be so overpowered. Here's... Okay, I thought I saw in another video, and I can't remember who it was, uh, maybe it's Costine uh, or Great Book of Grudges, I'm not for sure, but they're showcasing the, the Mother of Stankia, like actual campaign, right? And I swear their chariot, they were on like elks instead of being pulled by the things in the woods. So can anybody confirm, is Mother of Stankia's uh, chariot pulled on the pulled by an elk, or are they pulled by things in the woods? Can anybody confirm that in the comments below? Oh, they're gonna be so strong. Knock them out! Get them out of here! She seems to be very powerful. And I think she has a lot of debuffs too with her her type of her type of magic. To the young of Kislev, Mother Ostankia is a fairy tale, 
a cryptid yep. of the forests who will come out and chastise naughty children for disobeying their parents. Really? To those who stand against Kislev, both within and without, she's a much more real horror. The witch but yet, she starts in Nagaroth area? I guess I gotta turn into the Nagaroth Thunderdome over there. The Kislev's forests is powered by the lands themselves. Lands yeah. she will fight tooth and claw to protect. Mm. And so we'll get into this mechanic Titan too. War, Warhammer 3, because she's a powerful wizard on a fast sled with terrifying artillery from a magic cauldron. Starting yeah. in the Dolganyir forests on the Road of Skulls in the Realm of Chaos campaign and on the uh -huh. Bleak Coast in Immortal Empires. Okay, so Bleak Coast, Immortal Empires over there by Morathi, and lore has it uh, that Morathi was kind of taken in by Mother Ostankia and kind of learned everything she knows before you know, being converted over the Dark Elves. So uh, kind of that's the tie and kind of maybe why she is over here. And if you know any, but any more tidbits of that lore, please put it in the comments below. Uh, but as far as I can understand is that Mother Ostankia has a tie with Marathi and that's why she's over here. Mother Ostankia's goal is simple. To trample the hags, you know, the dirt they seek to corrupt. Mother Ostankia's victory condition in both realms of chaos and immortal empires is different from the majority of her Kislevite counterparts. She has little concern for the devotion to the Ursonite faith, but yeah, a lot of her summons are bears and stuff. Much older than um, the gods. Does Any she though? From the earth and the spirits within it. Her bears comes from ancient little, little. Faith, a little, uh, and to the Ursin, really? Like, you're all about bears. Pivotal. In collecting five of these through research and use of spirits, her objective becomes clear. To obtain the malediction of ruin. With now, her, I think they're going to go into it soon, but her hexes are things where she has to travel to different uh, forest areas. So that's going to be just like the Wood Elves ability, you know, where they can kind of travel along. I think they're going to explain it right here, where she can kind of travel to different wooded areas to then get that hex and, cr and cleanse that area. As she grows in power, as do the number of hexes you can utilize. Yeah. Teleporting armies to magical forests. There we go. Just like the Wood Elves. Even spawning the horrors of the forest in settlements, the hexes she wields are powerful. So it's cool too, and I think they'll go over in this video where she can act the hexes that she performs, she can actually create those as banners and use those as debuffs on the P on like the enemy faction she fights. I think that's kind of cool. Alongside these hexes are the incantations and curses a oh, yeah, right here. can create within right here. the witch's hut. The cauldron is for more than just artillery and scary spectral spider legs after all. Using trinkets gained either through alliance or conflict, incantations and curses can be crafted for use as one-off banners. Literally Grom's, Grom's cauldron. It's the same thing. Or, boons, or inflict pain on certain there we go. units changing the tide of battle. Mother Ostankia may fall under Kislev's Mother Ostanki leg. Her armies are very different from her contemporaries. While she can gain the usual Kislevite roster of Kossars and Streltsy through an alliance with other Kislevite factions, her forces invoke the horrors of the forest, from giant spiders and yeah. thirsty bats to the new forces Ostankia brings. Let's check out some of those unique What the units. three the three new forces. Nice. That's a huge army roster right there. To protect the lands. Possess power of the lore of beasts. Hag witches that don't even have the lore of hags. Am I missing something here? Ambushes. These these actually ambushers do look pretty cool. So they have stock they have 150 range armor piercing missiles. So they're they're going to be pretty tough. Yeah, look at that. Terrain. Let's pause for a second. Yeah, so they're stealthy. They have stock. They have, I mean, 23, 150 range, 24 uh, ammunition. They're a melee attack and defense. It's not terrible. Leadership is okay. Those are going to be nice units to have. Like, I think I think those are going to be a good addition. Also emerging from the mists, the things in the woods. Feral beasts that move through the trees as if they were nothing. 
seek out those who would even so another thing too that i just the whole thing with mother stink yeah which is, i'm trying to picture this and if you guys have any input on this please let me know in the comments below the things in the woods and the incarnate uh, elemental of beasts or that the big monster right those are chaos monsters now i know all magic is stemmed from chaos in some capacity but Mother Stenka is trying to rid the land of chaos, yet she's using chaos beasts. And the things in the woods on tabletop lore and stuff, they're actually more chaos beasts than they are Kislev beasts. So, like, I'm just trying to see the correlation and why they added in these into the roster you know and if you guys have any more insight on that please comment below dare to hide amongst the woods they call home and the behemoth of kislev's natural fury the incarnate element yeah, he's gonna be of tough. Beasts, tough real tough brings forth the terror of the motherland no woodland can stop its passage no mortal man can withstand its fearful visage large or small nobody can stop this beast's fury it's not just these who have answered the call of Kislev's lands, however. New and then that incarnate beast, didn't it used to be just a summon? Like a chaos summon? It never really had a physical form, as far as what I'm understanding. Uh, but now it is a physical monster. So like, I don't see why Creative Assembly is trying to take this approach with it. It's not just these who have answered the call of Kislev's lands, however. New mm -hmm. regiments of renown have well, come to heed yeah, the reskins. wolf hearts. Voidenov's brawlers and the Mordheim Beowulfs have come to Kislev's aid in the land's Mordheim Beowulfs. The forces of chaos may taint man, but it'll take a lot more for them to taint these lands. Mother Astankia is ready to protect the lands of Kislev. But Amen. you do well not to call her a hag. Okay. She wouldn't like that. She might like it if you considered pre-ordering or letting us know your thoughts in the comments below. Gosh, I like the guy who recorded this. Good for him. You know, I'm, I'm sure he just probably read off a script, but I could, you could just sense the whole, like, really? God, this is desperate. Like having to talk like that. And, you know, you know what she wouldn't like though, if you pre-ordered, like, come, come on. Like you, you can do better than that for sure. Uh, but what did you guys think of uh, the Mother Stanky gameplay showcase? Now, the only reason I'm going to say that I'm excited for is I'm just excited for new content, trying them out. Uh, I've always wanted to try a Kislev campaign, and I think Mother Stanky is going to be the closest I can get to a Kislev campaign. I've done the other ones, and they're just so hard to play through. Uh, they, there's a lot of downfalls with the Kislevite roster. Jan Bo is starting to win me over. Don't get me wrong. I mean, the Cathayan armies now, especially with Jan Bo and his abilities, uh, it's really starting to win me over. Uh, but man, the, the Nagaroth Thunderdome, now that Mother Stank is going to be there, might be, might be something to check out. Uh, the Changeling, I, I would say of the three of them, the Changeling's probably on the lower end of the totem for me of the three. Uh, as of right now, I'm kind of leaning towards Mother Stankia 1, Yambo 2, in order of playthroughs, and then Changeling 3. But let me know what your guys' playthrough is once Shadows of Change comes out, or if you're not even getting Shadows of Change, what's your opinion on the matter? So we'll talk to you guys later. I appreciate you. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll talk to you later.